We have watched everything. We've watched TOS, TAS, five of the movies, two seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation, and finally, some might say, we're starting the show. <laughs> so true. So many people told us when we started TNG, and we were so excited to start. But everyone said, oh, well, I'll be back at season three, or <laughs> you'll like it once you get to season three. We really enjoyed the first two seasons. Some parts were good, and some parts were like that era when you're growing up in your preteens or your cringy youth. I feel like now we're going into adulthood. You know, as much as the praise and all of the stuff we've heard online has made us think that this is almost like starting a new show, we gotta do our best to just reset. If season two taught us anything, take it one episode at a time, because it could be the best thing we've ever seen, pilot dog turd, or like most of them, pretty okay. Yeah, the amount of times we're like, well, we just had a good one, so the next one's gonna be, and mm -hmm. the next one's even better. I'm excited to see what looks different in season three. Who changed shirts? Who's going to be back? Yeah, what's going to happen? New characters, new plots, new storylines, anything carried over? It's going to be really exciting. You can watch this show in full along with us over on our Patreon. It's a great time to sign up for that. If it's your first time here, we actually discuss in depth every single episode of the show as well. We don't just react to it. So those are posted the day after the reaction. So make sure to follow up and watch that video. Are you ready for season three? I'm ready. We're ready. Are you guys ready? We're going to get started. Love this establishment shot. Like, oh, you missed this, didn't you? Like, we way overhype it. This already looks different. <laughs> it's been one shot. Forget to set your alarm, Wesley. You can tell the uniform's a bit different. Yeah. Black collars. Looking pretty crisp. Neutron star sucks up the star material from the red giant until it explodes. And it is but 18 hours away. This guy looks familiar. He's from something. Woo! Don't slugs. Captain, you may lay it when ready. Alright, douchebag. Whoa! <laughs> Engineering. <laughs> the shield will not respond. Ooh, new intro? What is this? Oh, this is way different. We finally have a budget. <laughs> Space, the final frontier. I think the recording's the same. Maybe. Eh, maybe not. To boldly go where no one has gone before. Let's see who made the credits. All right, Patrick Stewart. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, made it. I guess that one. <laughs> Why would you give it away? <laughs> they wrote it in the credits. <laughs> uh, one time I wish we could hit skip intro. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. We've received all your complaining letters about the lack <laughs> of Beverly Crusher, so Gates McFadden will return. Interesting that the episode is titled Evolution. It seems pretty fitting. Did they do it on purpose at the time? Medical personnel, report to the bridge. Commander Data, check all systems. As a baby, get up. Explain control malfunction. No control malfunction has been recorded. So one of those typical Star Trek like, whoa, what's going on? Oh, we don't know. Oh shit! Oh, here we go. Whoa! Oh my god! Quite a dynamic family team, you crushers. Well, it's nice to be together again. I was at Star yeah. Trek Medical for a year. I missed about two inches of him. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want my mother to be flying through space with me. No, I take that back. I am sure I wouldn't want her. <laughs> A woman of letters. Great critic. I know. Good lord, son. You didn't read that unauthorized biography. Is he supposed to be famous or something? Tell me about him. He's becoming a very fine officer. He works as hard as any member of the crew. Tell me about him. Tell me actually what he does. Tell me how you, how you actually feel about him. Trusting. Strong. Does he have many friends? Has he ever been in love? Well, well, according to him. What were you doing when you were 17? Probably getting into more trouble than Wesley, I can assure you. 
<laughs> but Wesley, he's kind of a nerd. <laughs> it's not really that interesting. What well, you're absolutely sure. Sensors clearly indicate the approach of a board vessel. Shields up. Whoa. Computer, identify malfunction immediately. On to Bishop 4. Night. <laughs> <laughs> Impulse engines are down. Try warp engines. Nope. Sorry, Commander. I'd better get back to engineering. It does look different, man. It's weird. <laughs> like w Worf and Jordy. It's like, yeah. it's a little bit different. It's like, yeah, every season, just little changes. Excuse me, Captain, but Woo! Dr. Stubbs is waiting. Oh, yeah, the she hasn't been in it yet. When that star explodes, you will get to watch your experiment from the inside out. I would rather die than leave. Dr. Stubbs, I know how much this means to you. Please turn off your beam into my soul. <laughs> oh, damn. That's one way to put it. In order to get some power, I had to bypass the computer core, essentially hotwire the connection. I like the lights shining on them like that. It's just a mechanical problem, though, right? Increase magnification factor 50. Probably just some guy standing behind the camera with one of those strobe lights. <laughs> yeah. That every indie film filmmaker uses. If I didn't know any better, I'd say somebody had climbed in there and started taking it apart. But I feel like this has already happened multiple times in this show. Like, you know, something or someone getting into their computer and messing it up. And they needed some better security. They really do, yeah. Of their technology. Yeah. But what I like here is that I don't know what the problem is. True. We don't see a lightning bolt zapping through the, the ship. Oh, yeah. The, the guidance turn. The tap. It won't pour anything. <laughs> Oh, what are you doing? Gynon. Why are you here at your bar? <laughs> I've never been any good at being confined to quarters, as my husbands will attest to. Whoa. Oh, yeah, right away, that's why. I've been studying the nanites we have in the sick bay genetic supplies. And when I woke up, I saw the container had been left open. Oh. It's just a science project. You know, a doctor friend once said the same thing to me. Frankenstein was his name. She probably knew him. Probably. I stopped by your quarters, Wes. I assumed you'd be there since you're off duty. I'm at the bar. <laughs> you won't tell anybody, will you? I know. I will. If it's true. I like the fake out where like the thing's being sucked into the uh, that. It's like, oh, it's something with that. Nope, it's Wes's fault. <laughs> yeah, but I like, I mean, it's, it still could be both, though, you know, either one. So yeah, true. keep stringing us along. Uh, Dr. Stubbs' experiment is in serious. Let's get Data out of the chair, man. Let's get him doing something. I know, right? The door did not respond. Repeating sequence. It is Stars and Stripes Forever, sir, by John Philip Sousa. Yes, yes, I know that. Computer, shut off the music! <laughs> Can you get us out of this star system safely? No! Not now, Doctor. I'll try, Captain. The egg that Stubbs laid. No one will say that. <laughs> Do you know baseball? Yes, my father taught it to me when I was young. It was the beloved national pastime of the Americas, Wesley. One great blast and the crowd rises. A brand new era in astrophysics. Postponed 196 years on account of rain. I'm sorry, that dude is horrible. I'm, really? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm not into him at all. Okay. You like him? I, I thought that was a good speech. I'm beginning to think maybe you've taken on too many responsibilities. Look, I have done everything that everyone has asked of me and more. And how can you know? You haven't even been here. Oh. I'm here now, Wesley. Wesley? Just tell the truth. I think I've made a horrible mistake. Nanites. <laughs> That's pretty funny. They are kept tightly contained in a non-functioning state. Just the doctor guy. <laughs> they have evolved. Evolved? How does a machine evolve? I don't find a data. <laughs> it is conceivable that with each new generation, they enhance their own design. The rate of evolution would be extraordinary. He basically created the Borg again. <laughs> yeah, in a way, yeah. Element 0299. 
Increase magnification factor 1,000. No, you broke it. Ensign, will you work with Mr. Data to try to remove them safely? Say they took it pretty well. I expect them to go, Wesley, what have you done? Yeah. You are stripped of your ensign <laughs> title immediately. <laughs> but it's like he's really the first person ever to have these things interact like that. Uh, have you considered a high level charge? High level gamma radiation will kill them, Doctor. I know. Oh. <coughs> what? <coughs> Oh, shit. Probably because the doofus attacked them, so now they're attacking back. Yep. Oh! I guess turbo lift still worked. Report. He entered a computer access room and sterilized one of the processors with gamma radiation. Why does he look so arrogant? Because he's a piece of shit. The nanites in the upper core are all dead, Captain. And I know after doing this, you're going to want to go with through with my, go through with my experiment, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am a representative of the highest command of the Federation, which has directed oh. you to perform my experiment. It's one of those. If any man, woman, or child on this ship is harmed as a result of your experiment, I will have your head before the highest command in the Federation. Woo! You are talking about machines with a screw loose. Your own actions have provided evidence to the contrary. Get him, Data. In effect, you may have proven that the nanites do have a collective intelligence. I.e., go fuck yourself. <laughs> Extermination may be our only alternative. Good point. Of course, Worf has to agree with him. Exterminate the race! He's, he was right once. <laughs> he was right once. You gotta give him that. It's gonna be the right option sometimes. If he's not stealing the show with a great storyline, he's just <laughs> requesting death. Your self-portrait is so practiced. It's stretched so tight, the tension fills this room. I fear it will snap. A good try, Counselor. When you reach beneath a man's self-portrait, deep down inside, what you find is nothing at all. I like this shot, how it stayed at this far away yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. I guess the one good thing about the guy being unredeemably terrible is that everyone gets getting good licks in on him. Because he sucks. They gonna assassinate this guy? Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh, I thought he was gonna like start choking <laughs> yeah. him. Yeah. You must protect me. Kill them. Yeah, you're right. He does suck. <laughs> Where are the binars? I have established contact. It says, stand back. <laughs> they could penetrate the molecular fabric of my hand covering into my nerve circuitry and interface with my verbal program. If they have control of a Starfleet commander, they become an even greater threat. I was going to bring that up. You're taking control of the strongest guy on the ship. And possessing him, uh, potentially? Yeah. We meant no harm. We were exploring. I understand. We are also explorers. Do you imagine that as a cliffhanger ending, like his eyes open, like black? Yeah, they're like, yeah, black or red. Next episode's forgotten about. We mean no harm to any other living creature. Oh, shit. He's gonna kill Dr. Stubbs. We know who you are. This conflict was started by mistakes on both sides. Let's agree to end it here and now. We agree. This ship is too confining. We require relocation. Great, cool, see ya. <laughs> Dr. Stubbs has used his influence to have planet Cabis Alpha 4 designated the new home of the Nanite civilization. His influence? Give me this planet. <laughs> 10 seconds to stellar blast, sir. We are at 40 million kilometers from the neutron star, sir. Hold your position. I hope it doesn't work. Doctor? Did it work, you piece of garbage? <laughs> Can you leave now? Do you have any children, Guinan? A lot. Oh. A mother shapes her child in ways she doesn't even realize. 
sometimes just by listening. What a great character interaction, you know, never got to see it before. Yeah, just starting off hot. Now that is healthy for a boy his age. I mean that as a doctor, not as just a mother. I was about to say, was that Wesley walking in with a girl? Oh my God, bro is pulling. With an attractive young woman who obviously looks at him with extraordinary affection. What do you know about this girl? <laughs> <laughs> That's good, that's good. Uh, yeah, so man, this show, not very good at season premieres. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not the strongest story. I think they were just banking on Beverly Crusher being back. Which, yes, I do in large part give the whole episode a pass just based on that. I mean... It gets a pass. It, we had Guyan in there. Just all the stuff with them. This is one, another one of those episodes where I don't give a fuck about the actual plot but just seeing this, the characters talk to each other in between oh what's happening is that's fine enough for me yeah uh first of all why is dr crusher like my favorite star kick star trek character ever because she's been gone now that she's back it's like extra i'm sure it'll just kind of we'll get used to it after a while um but as far as the episode, um, neat idea with the nanites, and especially I really like that turn of them taking over data to communicate mm -hmm. much better than Contagion last season where, where he was down on that planet and gets like, you know, has to act like a robot, you know, malfunctioning that uh, we both didn't like and everyone yeah. got mad at us. <laughs> this was much better. Brent Spiner again, knocks it out of the park. Uh, but just Dr. Stubbs has, might be my least favorite character, guest character in the show thus far. <laughs> Didn't like his character, generic Federation-esque character, and didn't like the actor at all. And this is where everyone's going to say, oh, actually, you know, Ken Jenkins is a, you know, huge star in the 80s. You know, sorry, I don't, I've never seen him before. He was bad, okay? But uh, he kind of ruined the story side of it for me. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head on all of those. I did like his uh, baseball promo. I like that. But everything else was way a little bit over the top for me. Not likable at all. Like you said, typical Starfleet. Like, okay. Uh, I like the bait and switch where, like, the answer was almost right in the beginning when it opens with the, the pan shot, the Wesley sleeping, and I think the container was open. But you're not even... It's the very beginning. You're not thinking about that. And then, like, oh, they get pulled into this thing. It's like, oh, okay, this... Uh, that uh, current wave gave them a virus. That's the episode. Great. But no, I like the bait and switch. It was actually Wesley's nanomites uh and i do like the whole story where he thinks he's gonna get in trouble by uh telling them i think i think that's part of the reason but also he, he doesn't want to fuck up because you know he's been doing so well yeah but no he tells them and everything's fine it's like okay let's figure it out like that's how it should be yeah and i good direction from winrich colby again here the opening shot was really good there's a number of shots in the episode that stood out to me as interesting hopefully that continues um so yeah there was things i liked but it's tough to get past Dr. Stubbs. I think that's going to be my new name for when I don't like a guest character. I'm just going to call him a Dr. Stubbs. I think he's the bar for me. Uh, but this wasn't a terrible episode. I enjoyed it. And uh, again, largely give it a pass because we get Dr. Crusher back. No mention of Pulaski at all, unless I missed it. Yeah, no they, credit. They didn't even acknowledge like that she left or anything like they did for Crusher last season. So that's interesting. I'm sure you guys will tell us more about that. Yeah. Uh, I guess you... Also, you substitute one goat for another. Like, they had to take away Colomini for this episode. <laughs> but, I'm sorry, Colum, but Beverly is the OG goat, and I'm very happy to have her. Uh, dude, dude, imagine once Dr. Crusher and Chief O'Brien are on screen together. Oh, <laughs> Like the Arnold uh, pr Predator meme? Yeah. <laughs> you son of a bitch. That's going to be nuts. Marina Sirtes, uh, her character. Troy. <laughs> Terrible names. Uh, I think they're... Tr almost finally finding her groove the way she delivers her lines and breaks people down instead of character walks away he's feeling like this okay thanks see ya but her actually going up to the person and interrogating them and dropping these very betazoid lines of dialogue is a much better much better use yeah absolutely. I, I feel like and Worf just uh, doing what he does best not trusting anybody but <laughs> but I'm okay with him in the background because I know We'll get through a rotation, and he'll get another episode, I'm sure. I hope. If it's your first time here, we actually discuss in-depth 
every single episode of the show as well. We don't just react to it. So those are posted the day after the reaction. So make sure to follow up and watch that video as well as all of Star Trek along with us. And uh, while we didn't love this one, this isn't a, oh, everyone's wrong about season three. Like we're not on that boat. I know everyone is scared. I know. But don't be scared that we didn't love this first one. We'll go into episode two of the clean slate. And if we don't want to love that one, then we'll start to turn on it. <laughs> we were wrong about the target audience. <laughs> different we finally have a budget <laughs>